Hey guys, today I'm going to answer some questions that I got on Instagram. So I asked you guys what you wanted to know about me, um, music or just life related. So today I'm going to answer them while I make some chai tea cookies. They are really delicious cookies and they're kind of simple to make. I'm not gonna like do a cooking show thing, but I just thought it would be cute to watch me bake some cookies while I answer some questions. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth. I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com and I make videos here on YouTube. So my blog is always linked down below for you to check out. I hope you enjoy the video. So the first step in this cookie recipe is to beat the butter for a minute. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way before I answer any questions. <laughs> Okay, this butter is looking good now, so I think I'm going to go ahead and answer my first question. So the first one is, what do you like to do during your breaks from practicing and performing? So I love to read. Um, right now, like this whole fall, I've been rereading the Harry Potter series just because it's comforting. I'm kind of separating the art from the artist right now, but um, it's been really nice reading those again. And I absolutely love Kate Morton. She's an Australian author and she writes, I think they're described as like modern gothic novels. So it sounds kind of scary, but it's basically like historical fiction and mysteries mixed together and it's always kind of like family drama stuff. So there's usually like a modern component and then um, like a historical character, not real life historical, but like a character in history. It's usually like either of the world wars and the books usually take place in like England or Australia, sometimes both. Um, so you'll get the perspective of a modern character trying to figure out something that happened in the past and then that past character's perspective and it'll flip chapter to chapter and i usually don't like books that are like split perspective but she does it so well and it's you always know who's um directing the narrative really so my best friend got me um into her books and i just absolutely love them i have two that i haven't read yet and i think she's writing another one right now so that's so exciting um i love to listen to music and I love baking, as you can probably tell. Yeah, those are some of my favorite things to do. Now we need a half cup of vegetable oil. This might take a little while. There we go. And now we blend this into the butter. Okay, the next two questions are what inspired you to become a musician and why did you choose the viola? So I'll answer this kind of all in one. Some of my first memories are just asking my parents to let me play the violin. So um, they used to play classical music a lot, like on CDs in the car and everything. So I just grew up listening to the violin among other classical instruments. So I just, I loved the sound of it, so I always wanted to play it, but my mom's a piano teacher, so we made a deal that I would learn the piano first, and then after a year or two, after I like learned how to read music and everything, if I still wanted to play the violin, then I could switch over. So I started piano when I was five, and then um, a little like youth string group came to my elementary school, and they played when I was in second grade, so I was eight, um, and I, I was like so glued to their performance, and so I came home and I told my parents, what had happened and that I wanted to learn the violin and that now I knew a teacher because she'd come to my school. So we set up a lesson with her and I was hooked immediately. I absolutely loved it. My first teacher's name was Mary and we've done a lot of music together through the years ever since I was eight until like I went to college. So then I played the violin for a few years and then I heard the viola and I really listened to it and I loved the tone. I was so just drawn to it immediately. So. Um, I asked my mom if I could start learning the viola and she said yes. I was very surprised, <laughs> but um, I borrowed a viola from my teacher Mary and I started teaching myself and then I started getting lessons and I absolutely loved it and I immediately knew that I loved it more than the violin and it was like the perfect instrument for me. So I don't know if there's like one person or one thing that inspired me, me to be a musician just because I always wanted to play music, but um, you know, I've had a lot of great music teachers and private music, like school music teachers and private music teachers um, that always inspired me and made me want to be a musician. And I think a big part of it was my youth orchestra too, because I absolutely loved being in my youth orchestra. The conductor was really great and enthusiastic. So I learned a lot and I loved the environment of being in an orchestra. And now, like, I don't know if I really want to be an orchestral musician, but I still love it. And it really made me want to be like a professional musician. Next, we had a half cup of sugar half cup of powdered sugar, one egg, and two teaspoons of vanilla. And now we're going to mix that together with the mixer. 
Okay, next question is what is your favorite orchestral piece and what is your favorite chamber piece? So my favorite orchestral piece, I don't know if I have one. <laughs> um, I love Stravinsky's ballets a lot. Um, what else do I love? I love a lot. I'm gonna have to think about this for a while, so I'll just put an answer up on the screen because <laughs> I'm so indecisive. So at the time of editing this, this is my favorite orchestral piece right now. And it'll probably change in like an hour or two. Um, my favorite chamber piece, though, I have two very favorites. One of them is Shostakovich's Eighth String Quartet. Um, I got to play this when I was a freshman with a few friends, and it was such an incredible experience. We were all very passionate about the piece, so it was really great. We had a few rehearsals every single week, and it, it was really awesome. So we were able to learn the entire piece through the semester, and it was just such a great experience. And then my other favorite is Tchaikovsky's Souvenir to Florence. I played this at a music festival and it's, I don't know, it's just what chamber music sounds like to me. Like, I think of chamber music and that's exactly what I want to hear. Um, it sounds very Mozart to me, which makes total sense because Tchaikovsky absolutely loved Mozart, so it's no surprise that his music sounds similar. And I think the instrumentation is really cool, it's a sextet, so two violins, two violas, and two cellos, yeah. <laughs> and I had such a great time learning this piece, I only did the first movement, but it was so much fun. It was really difficult, especially with six people, but it's, I just absolutely love that piece. I think it's gorgeous. Next we add in a bunch of the dry ingredients. So this is half teaspoon of baking soda, then a fourth teaspoon of salt, two cups of flour, which I'll mix in kind of in parts so that it's not all the flour all at once. And then what makes it a chai tea cookie instead of a sugar cookie is we'll put in one bag of chai tea. So I've used two different kinds. In this recipe before and this one is definitely the best for this recipe it's just the tezo classic or tezo chai classic <laughs> it looks like this so i'm just dumping in one bag of that and the flour some of the flour and i'm just going to start mixing this all together and the rest of the flour Next question is what is my favorite performance memory? So I'm gonna have to go with when I performed the Zelter Concerto with my youth orchestra. It was at our final concert when I was a senior. I won the concerto competition back in probably January of that year, it was 2015. Um, it was such an incredible experience. I was wearing a gorgeous dress. The performance is actually up on YouTube. It's my most viewed video. It has 1.2k views. So if you want to go check that out, it was five years ago, so I've improved a bit since then, but I'll link it up in the eye. Um, it was just such an awesome performance. I never wanted it to end. I was just, I was so excited in the moment. Like, I just, I knew that it was going to be like an amazing memory. And so I feel like I kind of really, um, like I really stayed in the moment in that performance but like in a good way, not in a nervous way. It was in a very good excitement kind of way. So um, that was such an awesome experience. And I don't know, I just, I was so sad when it was over. Like I got to the cadenza and I was genuinely sad that I knew the movement was almost over because I only did the first movement, but that was such an awesome experience. And I felt like I did a really good job. Like I was, I was sort of nervous, but I feel like I had like good adrenaline and like, I was just so excited, and I had, like, a lot of friends and family there to watch, and I was just so excited, and I knew that I was going to the school that I really wanted to go to in the fall, like, in the coming months, so I was just really excited about my potential career, I guess, and I just had so much per fun performing that night. <laughs> okay, what is your favorite piece to play? So I said this in my holiday gift guide, but as you can tell, I've already taste tested some dough, and it's delicious. Okay, so... I mentioned this in my holiday gift guide, which is linked above in the eye if you want to go check that out. Um, my favorite piece I've ever played on the viola is the Rebecca Clark Viola Sonata. It's so beautiful, and I played it for my junior recital back in 2017, and I had so much fun learning this because it was a piece I loved before I started to learn it, which is why I decided to learn it. And it was my entire junior recital because it was about like 27 minutes long, which was like the perfect length for the recital. So. Yeah, that was so much fun. Next question um, is, what's your most stressful performance? I don't know if it was the most stressful, but one performance that I got really nervous for was when my quartet in 2015 
Uh, no, no, not 2015. 2019. Just a year ago. But one of the performances that I got the most nervous for was when my quartet in 2019 performed for the Kronos Quartet in a master class. Um, it was part of their 50 for the Future project, which is really awesome. I'll link it down below if you'd like to check it out. It's a really cool like, initiative. So um, we got to learn a piece that they had commissioned, and then they give master classes on those pieces. So we performed at a Smithsonian Museum for um, a few members of the Kronos Quartet. And my whole quartet was so nervous right before. Like, we were all shaking. <laughs> Like, we had played the piece so many times in preparation for this masterclass, but knowing that the quartet was going to be there was just so nerve-wracking, but it was a lot of fun, and I think we performed really well that day. Okay, this batch is ready, so I'm going to put these in the oven. These are pretty small, so I'm just going to put them in for eight minutes to start, and we'll see how they look then. <laughs> Okay, so while these are baking in the oven, I have a few performance and viola related questions that I'd like to answer. So the first one is from a flutist who is learning how to play the viola, which is so exciting. She wants to know how to kind of relieve some tension in the right hand. So um, I gave her some tips already just to get started, but um, this is what I've told her so far. So you can kind of put the viola into a playing position like this, grab the both your left hand, which feels really weird. <laughs> Let go of your right hand, just kind of release your whole right arm and shoulder and everything. And then slowly reach up and grab the bow. And now I feel really loose and relaxed and like no tension. So you can see. And as soon as I lift it up, my fingers have to do a bit more work because I don't have the viola there to support it anymore. But if this feels good, do it as many times as you need to. Do it very slowly. Try to um, not have any tension. Just slowly lift your arm up and place it. I'll do it closer up here just in case it didn't show on the camera. Slowly going up, making sure I have no tension. There. Now I'm holding the bow. So if this feels good for you, then um, try to strive for that feeling when you're actually playing. Another tip is... Um, just to release your hands and any tension that you have during any rest or any break in the performance. So if you have a rest, just kind of like letting your shoulder go. Just take a deep breath and just release it. That can help a lot. I know that's more for the shoulder, but extend that down into your fingers as well. Just imagine all of that. And you can always just do this kind of thing where, see the bow is staying in place because gravity, is, you know, the string won't let it go anywhere. And my hand can do so many things, try not to touch the bow here, um, can move so many different ways, and the bow is still on the instrument. So just, you know, if you have a rest or something, you can just kind of, you can do this. I mean, if you're just practicing and no one is watching you, who cares? Just as long as you're relieving the tension. And, you know, don't go for too long if you're not ready. Um, playing the viola is... A really really tough thing to do physically and mentally all around it's just tough I've had so many problems with my left arm just holding the viola up for long periods of time especially when playing operas so if you start out playing too much too soon it's gonna be really hard because your body isn't used to it yet so just like any kind of exercise or anything you want to slowly build up to it um, and get your stamina up so this is what my bow hold looks like if this helps My thumb is bent a little bit, supporting from below. These two fingers are just laying here. This finger, I put it out like this. I don't remember the right words. Um, yeah, so you, you can do more like this. I personally find it comfortable to do this. And then your pinky should be bent, and just the tip of your pinky should be on the bow, which was probably the hardest part for me learning um, the correct bow hold early on because um, I always wanted to do this and lots of people do this but you don't get nearly um, not as much of the range of motion as you want to have like I feel very constricted right now with my pinky out like this so when you have your fingers bent like this like all of your knuckles should be kind of bent so like this one is bent 
but these of course are all bent but this one's bent a little bit so it's this one so it's this one and my pinky's bent too so that it stays, stays like on the tip and then my thumb knuckle is bent too so when my pinky is bent like this I have a lot more range of motion and I can do a lot more with my bow and um, you can put one of those little circular bandages is it called like a cornhole or something um, on the bow when you start out because it kind of creates a cushion for your pinky um, but I guess you kind of build up a slight callus um, because it was so uncomfortable for me at first but after years and years this just feels comfortable and natural to me now so the veal always feels super unnatural but we want to find ways to kind of make it more natural so for me I kind of do this <laughs> swing my arm and then I find the grip I don't do that every time I put up my instrument but if I feel unsettled then I might do that so we want to find ways to make it feel more natural but sometimes <laughs> things will feel unnatural at first 25 seconds until these cookies might be done. Yeah, these look good. I think these look good. Oh, hello, Quilly. What do you want? Do you want to be in the video? What? What? This is one of my cats. His name is Quilly. Um, I'll try to keep him away from the food. Yeah, he is. He doesn't really like being held, but he just came in the room meowing, so I don't really know what he wants. What do you want, Quilly? Do you want to see what I'm doing? I'm making cookies. I wish you could eat them. There you go. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, I think I know the answer to this one, but if you could play with any artist dead or alive, who would it be? My best friend asked this, and she definitely... That was the answer. Um, my answer is Taylor Swift, of course. Um, she's my favorite singer and songwriter and overall artist. I loved her since I first heard Love Story in 2009, and I've been obsessed with her ever since. I've seen her Speak Now tour and her 1989 tour. They were both so fantastic, and I'm obsessed with folklore. And on the day that I'm making this, she just announced another album, um, which is like a sister to folklore, I guess. And it comes up out at midnight, and I'm so excited for it. I'll uh, let you know what I think about it, since by the time this video goes out, the album will be out. <laughs> That's crazy. I was going to say this at the beginning, but this is Taylor Swift's chai tea cookie recipe. Um, it's her favorite sugar cookie recipe, which is by Joy the Baker. And then she added like the chai tea elements to it. So um, Taylor, I'm making your cookies. So please, please hire me. <laughs> Next question is, um, is there a dream goal you have related to performing like a dream venue or person to collaborate with? So other than person to collaborate with, with which I just answered. Though, I mean, I would love to collaborate with Hilary Hahn. That'd be amazing. <laughs> um, dream venue, like I've always wanted to perform in Carnegie Hall. Um, I haven't. Um, I think it'd be wonderful to perform anywhere in Europe because I've never been to Europe yet. Someday I will. I think it would just be so amazing to play in a beautiful hall like that. I did um, go on tour to Argentina with my conservatory's orchestra back in 2017 and it was so cool getting to perform in different concert halls. Um, so I would love to do something like that. Um, but I don't know, I mean I just, I want to have a nice career. <laughs> Um, and I want to play a lot with my boyfriend who's a bassist. We already have a duo, so um, I hope that we can do a lot with that. Do a lot with that. Yeah. These are ready for the oven. So these cookies are supposed to have a glaze on them. It's really, really good, but I don't really feel like making that today. <laughs> so um, this will be my last little batch of cookies to bake. So these will be my last few questions as well. So what's the best way to keep stamina to play longer pieces without getting too tense? So I kind of touched on this one with the right hand, but overall just finding places to release, even writing those places in in your music can help. Um, if you're playing with a pianist, you can always use the rehearsals with your pianist to find spots where that works. Um, see if you have any long enough rest where you can put down your instrument and kind of like shake out your shoulders and everything. Um, you can even do that to the beat too. You can like breathe in for and breathe out for to relax. Just kind of choreographing that with the music 
might be able to help you. Um, you can find notes to relax on too, not even during rest. Like while you're playing, you can find like a whole note where you can just kind of like breathe into it and kind of let your weight release into it. I found that that really helps me and it helps me get a nice sound too if I'm not focusing so much on pulling but I just like relax into it, it creates a really nice sound as well. So I don't think I have one best way of controlling tension and I don't know if there is one best way but those are a few ways that I have found to be able to manage tension. Okay so I really like this question. Tips on what to ask and how to impress teachers during trial lessons. So um, of course you know you I'm sure you're focused on trying to play your best um, because you want to impress them playing wise and so you know trying your best is the best you're going to do in that aspect but I think that asking good questions can go a long way. Showing a teacher that you're interested and that you're kind of on an educational journey and that you're interested enough to have questions can mean a lot to them, I think. <laughs> Tips on what to ask them. Um, I think you should do some research on a teacher first and, you know, it depends on how much information is out there. You can ask them, like, if, if there's, like, a specific style of teaching that they do, um, who their teacher was, maybe, where they studied. You can even ask what their favorite pieces are or where they've performed, like the ensembles that they've been in. You can ask how they approach different subjects. So I think it's really helpful if in kind of the weeks or months leading up to trial lesson, I mean, you never know how much time you're going to have leading up to trial lesson, but if you have some time and you know it's scheduled, um, kind of creating a goal, something that you want to figure out down the line. So if you have a lot of tension in your thumb, like I did, asking that teacher, like, how can I work on this tension? What would you do? Like, would you have a plan of how to help me release this tension if we were to study together? Um, kind of creating goals like that, that can also set you up to ask really good questions. So just kind of sitting down and thinking what you want to accomplish in that trial lesson and what you would want to accomplish if you were to study with that teacher, I think can really help set up the trial lesson in a really productive way. And it might make you less nervous too if you come in with some goals rather than just thinking, I want to play really well and impress this person. I hope you enjoyed this format of video. I thought it was something fun and different I could do. So like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment below any other questions that you have so I can make another Q&A video in the future. I really hope this was helpful to some of you and that you just enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go enjoy these cookies now. So subscribe if you wanna see more of my music related content. I post new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.